one of the reasons that Lars Olson and I wrote that um, cytometry A review that came out about this time last year was that he was an informatician that was visiting our lab and he and I had several discussions that were started out as 20 minute discussions and became two hour discussions. Talking about all of the different components on the bench side as well as on the machine side. And so something like, something as simple as oxide spillovers or the fact that you could have a contamination that you, that is not present in your data because you're not acquiring the, that channel, but maybe the oxide channel that you're, um, is in um, the panel that you're acquiring. So basically you're having this background that is seemingly out of nowhere, but that's because of some other problem that you have actually in your sample. And actually when you mentioned this, I think this is one thing that people who come from flow to the world of the CITAF, they think that there is no spillover and, and <laughs> go and, ahead. And there is, and that's something that was underappreciated um, at the beginning of CITOF. I mean, mm -hmm. if you go back to the very, very, very early pre DVS sciences papers from um, Scott Tanner's group um, when they were at, at University of Toronto, that when they were publishing in mass spec journals, they were actually very clear about this. Oh, really? I wasn't yeah. aware of that. Yeah. So if you go back to, you know, one of the JA, JAAS articles, there's actually a spillover table that they have. Um, but it's something that was sort of pushed to the wayside slash de-emphasized in the marketing, I think. Yeah. Um, and that's, and I think that that's something that is much better appreciated, especially after things like Bill O'Gorman's um, spillover paper. Um, I think that people are, Saito has been around for almost 10 years now or about 10 years now. I think that there's, I think we're in a process of reevaluation, um, and I think that that's really good for the field.